A unique feature to Affinity Designer and actually Affinity Photo, if you've tried either, are these things called personas. And you can think of these, I think, as uh, essentially different modes within the same application. Um, I think if you're coming from Photoshop or Illustrator or something like that, these don't necessarily exist in that. And I think it's quite neat to see, you know, how, you know, kind of taking maybe the foundation Adobe built with their platforms and Affinity, that team is kind of building on top of it and, you know, optimizing it in this sense. So. Uh, there are three unique personas to Affinity Designer. Uh, Affinity Photo will have more, and I'll probably cover that in a different video series or something. Uh, but for this one itself, there is the actual um, draw persona, which is the one that loads by default when you open up the program. There is a pixel persona, which essentially changes the, the interface that you work with with uh, in the tools available to you and then finally the export persona uh, this video is going to be about the export persona in particular and how actually awesome it is to use um, if you're coming from sketch uh, it's very similar to that i think it's a little more powerful you can have more control over each asset you export i have some basic random art elements on the page here i just created these buttons i pulled this from an illustration i made for uh, my company's uh, homepage, a couple of creatives.com check that out if you don't mind and the web crunch logo of course and then just a regular raster image maybe just a, like a, what would be a user image in one of your mock-ups or web app design of some sort so as it stands, uh, there's no settings for these to be exported uh, currently. A big thing that's important to do is to make sure, at least for your sanity's sake, is to name your layers when you are in the draw persona when you're creating these things. Uh, when you do that, it transpires over to the export mode. Uh, and then from there, you can actually target these specifically. and I think in the old versions of Photoshop, you'd literally have to draw the slices. Maybe you could actually enter coordinates and stuff, but the cool thing about Affinity is you can create the slice just by clicking this create slice button down here on the bottom right. So as you saw, I just did that with this, this uh, icon of this guy looking off, thinking about, I don't know, stuff. So uh, the same is true for illustrated vector, uh, elements so it, it doesn't matter what type of image type you're using they'll all you know kind of work under this so I'm gonna go ahead and slice all these out in a realistic project this would be for me anyway like a maybe a style guide I put together or a actual web design um, if you're following along in my other series of um, how to design and code a product landing page it's on some other videos if you check those out. I do this and that so you can watch me in real time in a real project. Uh, but essentially, once you have your slices, you can either you know set these presets one by one or you can actually go to this slices tab. And from here, uh, by default, the entire document is a slice. I'm not sure why that is. I think that's just how you can save it if you want to export it that way. Uh, if you want to export one by one you can do that as well or all of them to do all of them you can check mark check mark each slice as they're called and export all of them here and this number will tally up as you do if you for instance want different file types there are a ton to choose from which is awesome say we want since this is a circle and it's clipped I, I, I would assume maybe a png would make sense for this but we probably want it to be a retina version too so you can actually add one in it at this preset here you can actually have it up to three times all of these units which are actually relative to certain um, applications or devices uh, so like the the p here the points all that stuff can relate to like maybe android devices i think 
um, and then the same for these. So it's really useful for, for UI design. A neat thing too is you can actually come in here and um, add certain tags, I guess I'm gonna call them, or what do they call them here? Components that actually are dynamically generated on the file name as they get exported. So you can see how deep it goes. Um, so it's pretty neat. Um, you can actually add at all at once. So I have PNGs here. Say I want, we'll just do JPEG for now. Uh, so all these will export as you click export slices. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I mean by that. This one's, I believe we can go for SVG or not, yeah, SVG, which that's cool. I love SVG, you should too, I hope. Buttons, I would never really use a, an image for a button, but I'm just kind of showing by example here. Maybe we'll do it as uh, just a PNG, why not? Because buttons you can create pretty easily with CSS on your own. Um, same with this at 1x. And then for the logo, We'll do the PNG one time and two time, or at two X, and then an SVG, which is what I would end up using for sure. And there's presets, I believe, for export, print, web, and flatten. Um, for web, I'm pretty sure it basically kind of optimizes the SVG code to be at bare minimum what it needs to be to display on the web properly. For print, it adds, I think, I don't know, some of that stuff backed in. So there's, if you've not in, into SVG, there's a lot of parameters to understand, but in essence, it's basically taking a vector graphic and its output is code. So I'll probably do another video about SVG coming up. So stay tuned for that. So at this point, we have all these set to go. Um, the, the biggest thing to do now, obviously, is just to export them. So to do that, I'm going to create just a new folder on my desktop here and hit export. Then I'll pull that one up and we'll do this, get this out of the way. So as you can see, all that stuff exported, we did, since we only did a one time size for the button, I, you know, there's only one of those of each the purple and the green. Uh, I called this file dude. It exported a JPEG at normal size, dude, or P, a PNG at normal size, and then two, 2x. Um, and then logo was a PNG, SVG. We did a two times PNG. And the typewriter is a uh, SVG. So that's the fairly automated version. Uh, if you come from, or I don't know, from somewhere where you need to actually draw a slice, uh, it's possible to do that. So for instance, maybe I'll draw, I don't know, just a basic shape here for a second, just to show by example. Let me move this stuff. Eh, there we go. What, whatever, I'll just, you know, just this example. So we'll just call this circle or something. And then I'll go back to export persona. If you notice, I moved those buttons, the slices moved with it. I think that's super cool. Um, I don't think Photoshop's that cool. Not just saying, I mean, come on. Uh, okay, so this actually already, you can actually select it in the layers panel and it'll do that. Or if you really, I guess, wanna be hands-on, you can draw your actual slice as well. The neat thing about this is you can kind of tailor fit it to what you want or even, you know, dial in exact parameters like 140 by 140 here. Um, I found this to be especially useful in images where maybe the slice that gets generated automatically, you have like a really big image, but it's clipped off or there's something overlaying it. You might not really need all the space the actual you know frame of the image takes up so you just slice it and then adjust the um, corners and edges like you can here so so you know at that point if you wanted to just slice only this 
you can do that. Uh, we'll just do for grinds a PNG. Let's do an SVG for web. Cool. And then if you want to export the PNG and the, the, uh, the SVG that I just fixed there, uh, you could click this little icon that exports the entire, I would say grouping here. Or if you want to do one by one, you can do it this way. So I'll do it both. Like, we'll just do that. This, if you already have it, it's going to prompt you to say replace. Cool. And so our, for some reason, name didn't carry over, but this is the slice. It's a terrible one. And the SVG. So. That's a general overview of uh, exports. You can adjust a lot of parameters in each file type that you do export on the top right here. Um, there's a lot of, like if you rasterize uh, images inside SVGs, they can do that. You can set the DPI of when that's done. Like if you want it at 300 DPI for print, that's cool. Or 72 for documents that are on the web. Same with, JPEG compression, all that stuff. It gets it gets really deep, and there's a lot of options, and I find it very useful when the time comes to export a design or even just design elements you may need for your future projects. It's it's super uh, fluid, super fast, and if you're coming from Photoshop or Illustrator or anything like that, I feel like it's a breath of fresh air. So check it out. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.